Hey everyone, welcome back to Evamax Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady with you, tying another fly. We're doing a biot parachute today. This is of the PMD variation. We're gonna do a size 16. This is kind of a larger size for a PMD imitation, maybe the largest you'd wanna go uh, in regards to matching that hatch, all the way down to a 24 if you can tie them that small. Uh, you could do these in a lot of different color options to do different mayfly variations. Um, even small stone flies, if you were to do a similar color to what we're doing today um, in a larger size, it could pass for a yellow sally um, or a, a variety of bugs for that matter. You can tie it on a TMCO hook. This is the TMC100, very traditional dry fly. And then I'm using some Danville's 70 uh, denier. This is the light Cahill color, matches nicely to the buyout we're going to be using on this. So we'll start our thread right on our hook shank. I'm gonna use my starting point here sort of as a gauge to where I wanna put that parachute post. So right about a hook eye to two hook eyes back is where we're gonna come back and set that. Before we get to that, I'm gonna work back and secure a tail. I'm using a Whiting Farm uh, cape today. This is a light done, which is a good option for this PMD variation we're doing. I'm going to take uh, this as a little bit of tailing material. Just pull those quills or those barbels about 90 degrees off the quill. And then we'll grab a small chunk of them. I'd say about 8 to 10 fibers for this size. And we're just going to try and keep all of our tips nicely aligned there. And we can measure out the length of our tail using our hook shank like so. Transfer that into our other hand and secure it on down right on top. A little short there, so we'll just pull it right on out until we have that length that we need like so, and then we'll cover that on up. Use this material to help smooth my transition when we tie in our calf tail here, which is gonna be our post. It can be very easy to get a bump in this region. So this hackle material helps to smooth that transition a bit. I'm working with these new micro arrow point scissors from Dr. Slick really make this micro work nice and easy. Super sharp scissors. So we'll cover that up and prepare to do our calf tail. So I have, or our calf post, I'm using just some calf body hair on this in the white, it's a very fine material. So it can be a little tricky to work with, but the more you use it, the, the easier it gets. I'm gonna take a small clump here. I Stacking, typically you're doing it the opposite direction. There's a right hand tire that is. You can see I have a pretty good hank. You can use your hook gape there to measure and keep consistent post. And we're just gonna try and keep those tips aligned and find our length. So for this, I kind of measure the hook shank just as a gauge. And then I go a little bit shorter than that for my post. And we're going to take this and tie it in right on top. The hair to behave the way I want it to here. So we'll position it right on top and we're going to do a couple of quick locking wraps to hold that in place. And then I'm going to pull the material upward and back and sneak in front of it. We're going to try and get it all here. We'll go right in front of it, and that's where we're going to build our dam, our thread dam, to kind of position this as a post, nice and upward there. My thread split on me a little bit, so let's clip that off. And continue to work on this here.
you have some thread up in front of that. You can sneak behind it. Making a couple more wraps here. All that material up and out of the way. And then we'll come right back behind and do a couple more locking wraps before we come in and trim out our material. And we're going to sneak in up as far as close to our thread wraps as we can, kind of clipping at an angle here. I always like to trim out as much as I can without sacrificing the integrity of it. And then we'll cover that up quickly here and work right on back and create our actual post. So I'm going to get nice and close to it and then we will go around and up this post a few times. You can turn your vise sideways can help a lot. Getting those vertical wraps on it. Trying to keep my hands out of the way here. So we'll do a few wraps right on up. And that'll be our thread base for our hackle that we're going to wrap down. And then work right on down. And we'll smooth this transition a little bit. Cut out some of those rogue fibers. Come in and secure our hackle piece in next. Get that in and out of the way. <clears throat> so I have a piece of hackle that I trimmed some of the barbels off to give myself a nice clean tie-in point there. And we're going to wrap this in so that the barbels are flaring out on a it's a uh, horizontal plane there. And we'll leave ourselves a little room here. So I'm going to do capturing wraps in front. And then I'm going to hold that hackle up and out of the way so that we can actually secure it to our post here. And then we can work on back. So now we need to make a nice smooth transition as we're going to wrap a biot as the body of this fly. So we'll head on back and forth here just a couple times real quick. Keeping that hackle up and out of the way. So the next material we're going to tie in is our turkey biot. And I'm using the yellowish um, tan color. This is a nice color, matches nicely with the light Cahill super fine dubbing we're going to use. I went ahead and pre-soaked these for a little while. If you don't do so, they can kind of crack and break on you. Um, so it can be pretty important to soak them, moisten them, uh, make them nice and supple to use. These turkey biots are going to have a bevel on them. Um, and you want to Depending on kind of the look you're going for, I'm going to go for a nice smooth body biot versus a textured body. So I'm going to tie the bevel so that it's facing outward. And then when I go to wrap it, it'll actually wrap down on itself and give that nice smooth body we're going for here. So I'm just going to try and keep that hackle out of the way there. And we'll secure this biot tip in. And then I'm going to half hitch off at that point. So we can bring our buyout on them forward. Grab some hackle pliers, makes this a little bit easier to work with. Keep that buyout from slipping out of your hand while we do nice, tight 
wraps forward. So this first one is going to flare on us and so we just want to cover that up as we go. Creating some nice natural segmentation. This fly can be tied in a lot of different variations. There's all kinds of colors to turkey biots these days, whether it be BWOs, larger mayflies, whatever kind of match the hatch you're going for. But nice secure wraps, keeping good tension on it as you go, right up to where we're going to capture it off. Making sure to keep pressure. Right behind that post. And then we can trim out that excess material here nice and close. and do our dubbing. As I mentioned, doing the light Cahill super fine dubbing always a great option for dry flies. Don't need a whole lot here. Just create a nice tight noodle. ourselves a thorax to this mayfly. So we'll do a couple of wraps behind the parachute and sneak on forward, go on up to the hook eye, work our way back. nice clean hands when you're working with the light Cahill. If you've got dirty hands, it'll darken your dubbing quite a bit. Which may or may not wash out when you go to fish it. And then we're going to end our thread right behind the post once again and leave it off to the side. I always check when I'm doing a post, make sure I cover everything up the way that I want to. And then all we have to do is wrap our hackle feather around our post here, keeping it horizontally laying. And we'll do a few wraps going up and back down. We have a nice full hackle there and then we can sneak our thread around the post and capture that off. Clip out that excess material and then we can come in and do our whip finish. And on this fly the whip finish is going to be done around our parachute post. So I always leave my, my fly sideways in the vise here. We can kind of sneak in and under do a few quick wraps. Whip finishes that is and clip out that excess thread here. That's all there is to a Buy out parachute.